Okay. Um, I think we're recording right now. So, okay. So, Psalm 138 was eight. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. So, why don't we, um, why don't we pray? Right. Um, let's look to the Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, um, for your word. We thank you for the testimony of the psalmist who declares that the Lord will perfect. Father, we thank you by the work of your word and your spirit, Lord. Um, you you perfect that which concerns us, Lord. Um, Father, we thank you that um, Lord, as we journey with you, Lord, you continue to work in us the things that we need working. You continue to strengthen us. You continue to approve things, Lord, that need to be removed out of our lives. And uh, you continue to establish us, Lord, in, in your work, Father God, and uh, and to be Christ-like in our thinking, in our speech, in our actions. And I just pray that uh, even as we spend this time today in your presence, that it'll be a it be a it'll be a work of strengthening in our hearts, Lord. It'll be a work of uh, Lord uh, refining. It'll be a work of uh, Lord moving into um, to be more like you, God. Uh, a step towards that, Lord. We thank you, uh, and we just um, Lord open our hearts to the work of your Spirit. We open our hearts, Lord, to the sowing of your Word in our hearts, Lord, and uh, we open up our lives to that, Master. And I know that some of these decisions might be difficult, tough, uh, and I pray that um, Lord that you will enable us. You'll give us the grace to do so. So we thank you in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Okay, so welcome back. Uh, those who joined, uh, joined recently. Um, so marriage and family, uh, interesting course. Um, last class, uh, last couple of sessions, uh, we looked at uh, understanding marriage. Um, we looked at several things, how um, marriage is a good thing. It is by God. It's God's design. Uh, it's not just a social idea, a social construct. Um, it's not a, something that society dreamed up, but it's from God. He's a designer, so um, he's very much. Uh, he needs to be part and parcel of uh, you know every marriage. He's a, he's a big factor. He's the third chord in the strand, or maybe the first chord in the strand, um, which strengthens the marriages. Um, so we looked at how um, you know it's for two people. It's between a male and a female. Um, it's uh, it's a covenant. It's an institution. So. So many wonderful things that we saw um, to give us an understanding of what marriage is, you know, to give us the um, see to um, um, the the complete picture, you know, uh, and to also give us the wholesome picture of what marriage is, which is very very important. Um, it's it's not just uh, you know um, uh, a romantic idea. It's not uh, you know it it is that it involves you know uh, there's a lot of romance in marriage and it involves a lot of love and all that. But um, also you know we need to look at it in totality. You know it is not just that. Right. So uh, we looked at that and we also started by um, looking at uh, uh, preparing for marriage. Right. How does one prepare? And we looked at the difference between uh, a wedding and a marriage, where a wedding is a as an event. It's in a one day thing. It's a ceremony, uh, a very special day uh, or a special time. Um, no doubt about it. But um, like the title of uh, you know very interesting book on marriage goes, you know, after every wedding comes a marriage. So the marriage refers to the life, the journey, the living out practically living out the promise that we make to each other, right? The vows that we make to each other uh, during the wedding ceremony. So we see that that's a lifetime because it's a covenant for life. Okay. So, and because it involves two different people, right? It involves two very different people um, and people who, uh, you know, who are, uh, you know, definitely, you know, who's, image they can be created in the image of god but that image is broken because of sin and god is restoring that praise god uh, but the fact is that uh, there are a lot of unfinished um, you know sides to us right uh, and which god is continuing to do that so when we put two people who have a lot of unfinished sides to them uh, who are works in progress and how does that marriage work right people who are very different uh, who have very strong likes strong dislikes strong opinions um, so the thing is uh, one needs to prepare for marriage right so we looked that was the second chapter 
of course, uh, you can download um, the uh, document. It's there in the classwork section. For those of you who have not done so, you can do that uh, and follow through um, in your notes. Right. So um, yeah, just give me a second, please. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, let's see. Um, just one second. Okay. I'm just taking the PowerPoint, so I thought it would be helpful. Um, just forgot to take that out. Just one, give me a minute, please. Um, okay. Okay. So, so one needs to prepare, you know, for marriage. Uh, well, we like we could have people in our family, especially you know, maybe our parents, maybe people whom we know who are living quite, uh, you know, happily married lives and uh, they didn't go through any of these, uh, you know, marriage preparation, premarital counseling and all that. And you might be wondering, you know, why, uh, you know, why should I go through or uh, maybe, you know, if you're already married person and uh, maybe you may have gone through, you may, may not have and then Maybe you're just thinking, uh, you know, is it, is it really necessary? Okay. Uh, well, the the answer is yes. It is necessary because uh, we live in time. We live in a time, and we live in a society where uh, we face a lot of cultural influence. Uh, we face a lot of uh, you know. There's a popular culture. There's, we face a lot of. In, in, in other in other words, we hear a lot of voices that are contrary uh, to the word of God. You know, and uh, maybe even tradition, maybe even customs, uh, which are good. Uh, but not necessarily, you know, uh, which are which are good as in we, which are normal, maybe in the place where you're living, but not necessarily, you know, in line with the word of God. And everybody does that. It's a it's the popular thing. It's that it's the thing to do. Um, so so definitely, you know, as individuals, one uh, needs to go through the preparation, you know, and. Um, and and it's it's absolutely necessary. So, yeah. So we are looking at how does one prepare for marriage. Okay. So if you are a single person, you know you can, you know you can say, okay, this is how I can prepare for marriage. Uh, if you are a married person, you can say, okay, you know these are the areas where I need to work on, right? Uh, where I need to work on. Okay, I've already made my choice. I'm already married. I'm I'm in this marriage right now. Um, well, and I've already you know made this commitment. So there's no turning back there's no changing but you know i'm going to prepare i'm going to i'm going to um you know strengthen this those areas that i see that are like you know there are limitations and maybe there's a you know deficient understanding so i need to work on it so that's the way to you know approach this whole um you know aspect of preparing right preparation okay okay so we saw that last class we saw that uh, you know wh while um a, a person you know maybe a person is um waiting to get married and looking for the right person we want to find the best person right we want to find the best suited person for us and maybe we have a list okay this person needs to be like this look like this um you know have all these qualities and have all these abilities and have all these characteristics and which is you know just fine uh, which is okay uh, that's that's absolutely okay, uh, but more important than that, you know, is to be the best person for the one whom you are going to get married to. That we <clears throat> be the best version of ourselves, that we become the best uh, version of ourselves, because uh, you know that's 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 something that uh, that we can we can do because that's in our control. And uh, you know we can we could do that. So, so becoming the best you is is the first thing that we looked at. That we can become the best uh, uh, we. You know, we can become that. Okay, uh, and uh, as part of that, we're going to look at one more area, 
where several areas actually with regarding uh, with regards to our emotions with regard to our you know management us of ourselves um, and so on so we're going to look at that today right okay um let me just share this with you okay okay that's coming up on your screen okay there we go okay so becoming the best version of ourselves and the lord jesus himself says in john chapter 14 you know i go to prepare something for you I prepare a place for you right so um, so he's preparing a place for us so preparation or preparing is not wasted time it's not something unscriptural it's definitely in line with scripture okay so uh, the, the second thing that we can look at or uh, when it comes to preparation you know we're preparing ourselves you know what about our emotional health okay so we see that <clears throat> we are spirit soul and body that's how god's created us um we have uh, our emotions which are uh, which are uh, you know a big part of us um what are our emotions well we 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 are happy we are sad we are maybe angry uh we we are sometimes anxious you know all these uh, emotions you know make us who we are we are a, a, a big part of uh, emotions are a big part of us and emotions can be positive emotions can be negative and uh, emotions actually uh, you know influence our thoughts influence our motives influence our behavior uh, our behavior our actions right so emotions can make us you know um, thrive in our relationship or emotions can be a great hindrance as well right our emotions get the better of us and uh, and really break down uh, uh, any uh, you know our relationship if it's a negative emotion right if we let our emotions rule us um, dictate to us our thoughts our actions then it becomes a it becomes a hindrance okay so let's look at that our emotional health let's look at um, you know um, like what we should what should we do let's uh, look at the scripture uh, this is what it says proverbs 15 and verse 13 a cheerful heart brings a smile to your face a sad heart makes it hard to get through the day okay that's the message uh, version uh, of uh, uh, John, sorry, Proverbs 15 and verse 13. A cheerful heart. Uh, I think the the New King James version. A merry heart uh, is what it says. A merry heart, a cheerful heart, right? So uh, it it's uh, it's like medicine. Uh, it actually brings a cheerful disposition. Uh, is what um, you know. New King James says. Okay, let's look at John chapter seven. Uh, sorry, Proverbs 17 and um, verse 22. Okay, so Proverbs 17 and verse 22. Um, again, um, yeah, I think this is the verse which says, A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Okay, let me read the other verse also, Proverbs 15 and verse 13, which says, A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken. So you see that, um, you know, what is on the inside of us, uh, our emotions, it, uh, it, it, makes for uh, a good disposition disposition a cheerful disposition and we see that it influences us physically physically it has a bearing uh, we might say it's just a thought or it's just a mood but physically it has a bearing and proverbs uh, 17 uh, it's very clear it says um, a broken spirit dries the bones okay so it's an important thing so our our emotional health okay uh, what is uh, how is it what is it um, our positive emotions our attitudes our behavior it's important so we need to consider that so um, one way to look at it is okay am i negative moody all the time uh, you know many times we think okay uh, i'm like this you know i'm down i'm i'm moody i'm negative i'm angry um, and then you know we think okay uh, having a spouse having a companion you know uh, in marriage uh, that will fix everything that will solve everything but the answer is no 
right? Because we take our negative emotions, our uh, uh, challenges with our emotional health into the relationship, right? And if we do not have the skill to manage, if they do not have the, uh, or if we have not uh, received healing for our emotions, then we're going to carry that into the marriage. And it's going to bring stress, bring, uh, you know, uh, have as it bring its own challenges to the relationship, right? So, uh, in fact, uh, marriage will, is, is not that, that cure, you know, in popular, it's, uh, in, in many cultures, you know, especially here in India, you know, sometimes people say, okay, just get that, get him married, get him married, and it'll solve everything. No, it, it won't solve everything. It'll, in fact, expose some of the problems. It'll aggravate some of the problems. The thing is to, to deal with that, to gain strength in those areas, and then, you know, uh, enter into a, a marriage relationship, right? Okay. So it's not a cure. It will only expose uh, those weaknesses and aggravate those weaknesses and it will be detrimental to the marriage relationship. Okay. Uh, so what are some negative or unhealthy uh, emotions, attitudes, behaviors? Okay. Right. So let's, let's look at some of them. Okay. It could be outbursts of anger. Okay. Outbursts of anger and wrath. People are, let's say someone is, you know, um, gets angry and it just takes uh, a very small, a very minor trigger to uh, for them to uh, you know uh, for them to get angry, a very minor thing, and they just very quickly get angry, just lose composure, uh, self control, and they don't know what they're speaking and and uh, they're extremely angry, throwing stuff and uh, and maybe uh, uh, you know it leads to physically you know, uh, uh, harming another person even, right? Now we, we see that's a very detrimental thing, outbursts of anger. So uh, if someone has outbursts of anger, well, they need to know how to how to deal with it, right? They need to know how to, um, well, if they're feeling that trigger, something is triggering that, then they need to actually find out and, uh, and not just manage it, you know, uh, deal with it in the sense, how do I uproot this thing? Right, uh, because if you're going to keep it suppressed, if you're going to keep it stuffed in, uh, one day it's going to come out like a vol volcano, and uh, bigger, badder, uh, causing a lot of uh, damages. Right, so so that's the thing. Um, okay. Uh, the next one is uh, you know when someone is always moody, depressive, um, uh, all the time, you know, feeling very low all the time. Um, well, it's just the opposite of being cheerful or joyful. Uh, if they're going to be feeling low all the time, then that again is a is a problem, right? It's uh, it's not normal. Well, it's see the thing is it's 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 one cannot be like absolutely uh, buoyant and joyful and cheerful and um, you know we 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 are human. We do get influenced by what is happening around. Maybe there are some challenges, and you know we we think about it, and maybe we go through this, you know, time of okay anxiety, and we see that okay, how do I solve this? And we're thinking, how do I, you know, face this challenge? And all that is normal, right? Uh, but the thing is, we bounce back, right? We bounce back. We we pray, we worship, we uh, we we have these things in us internal. You know strategies. We say, okay, uh, I'm I'm going to think about you know what is a, what was the Lord said. You know, I'm going to go back to the Word. I take it to the Lord. I cast my cares upon Him, and then bounce back, right? Um, so if we are not unable to do that, if we are continuing in that downward spiral, then that's a that's a problem that needs to be uh, addressed. Okay, okay. Let let's look at one more. Okay, unable to handle stressful situations. Okay, now, well, all of us uh, face uh, stressful situations. It could be like maybe there's a deadline and we need to, uh, let's say as students, uh, we have exams to prepare for and maybe there's a presentation to prepare for and uh, maybe there are some, you know, on a, on a particular day, there are like three presentations, and uh, and even though you you know you uh, you had a month to prepare, 
uh, maybe you just kept okay uh, you know thinking okay i'll do it i'll do it one day i'll do it this weekend that weekend and then suddenly the day is there you know that's a stressful situation right and so uh, you know how do you deal with those stressful situations right people uh, you know deal with it in different ways they just uh, you know we need to have a personal strategy to deal with it and right? if we cannot handle stress at all right if we need to do something maybe i need to go catch a train i need to go from place a to place b point a to point b and it's causing a lot of stress i need to go outside of the house i need to do this it's causing a lot, causing a lot of stress so just imagine uh, if you know you're married to someone um, who's you know always stressful or you are stressful and and uh, you just cause that person so you're in a bad mood right the person says something and you just snap at that person okay so you're stressed at, at all times uh, so it influences uh, the, the the relationship okay um then uh, uh, you know if you if one is always critical you know we're looking at uh, emotions motives uh, behaviors uh, being critical and judgmental like you just criticize everything uh, okay maybe uh, the food that we eat uh, you know maybe somebody's cooked the food and then just overly critical you know oh this is terrible uh, you know over and over again this is salty this is spicy this is terrible uh, like even if there's something you know minutely wrong with it you know being critical and judgmental you know it's it's okay to give feedback right it's okay to evaluate and say and speak the truth Right? But, the, but that needs to be spoken in love, right? So uh, if it's critical and being judgmental, being negative and being very pessimistic, okay? And also, uh, if you are always, you know, if you not uh, haven't dealt with guilt and, sh and you're overwhelmed with shame, guilt of the past maybe, um, guilt of certain choices, uh, feeling guilty because of certain things that we did or didn't do, and if that is still there, then every time we face, uh, let it say, a similar situation, or this comes up, the memory of this comes up, um, and then we are overwhelmed by it, overwhelmed by guilt. Uh, there's shame, there's condemnation, and we just, you know, buried buried in that. And uh, maybe there's a happy occasion. Right in the family, or you know, there's a celebration. Or maybe it's a wedding anniversary or something. And then here, you know, here's this person just overwhelmed and uh, by guilt and shame and unable to truly, you know, uh, participate or celebrate together or rejoice together. You know, then again, that's affecting, right? Um, guilt and and shame. Okay. Then what are some other things? Insecurity. Okay. Inadequacy lack of self-esteem or self-worth okay now this this might uh camouflage itself as a you know maybe like a very humble humility you know uh, but it's a really false humility it might it might show up like that you know the, the, oh i i'm i'm oh i'm i'm not worthy oh i i don't have uh, you know this ability or oh, i'm just a very simple person etc um but is it from a place of insecurity, right? Is it from a, from a place of inadequacy? The person is feeling very uh, inadequate. Um, maybe the person feels that hey, I don't have, or I'm not, you know, I'm not learned enough. Uh, I don't have an educational background. I do not have, uh, um, you know, I, I don't have enough money in the bank, uh, whatever it is, you know, insecurity and in inadequacy. Let's say a practical example would be, um, just excuse me. Um, okay, a practical example would be, uh, oops, um, let's say uh, the husband and the wife, you know, they are, both of them are working and uh, uh, they are earning. And let's say one person, you know, uh, for, you know, uh, typically let's say, the wife is doing extremely well you know successful and uh, the other person the husband is uh, struggling at the work right so the well the wife is uh, getting promotions and uh, increments in salary and uh, in pay and uh, doing extremely well and 
uh, and the other person is not the husband is not you know so if there's a sense of insecurity about that um, you know insecure what, how does it show up you know oh my wife is earning more than me oh I, my wife is uh, you know doing uh, is being successful and uh, you know if our security if the husband's security or a sense of self worth is not in christ you know then then that begins to affect their relationship right so one or two things could happen the husband could say uh, would really withdraw retreat and uh, and not really uh, uh, be forthcoming not really share shut down communication uh, become angry but not really show it you know internally just boiling boiling oh my wife is actually you know and the thing is it's no fault of us you know she's just doing well she's she's putting in a effort she's doing well and uh, maybe things are not going well in the company where the husband is working or whatever you know he needs to do well he needs to you know uh, upgrade his skills maybe there could be many factors right but the thing is you know this kind of a thing could happen or the husband might if the husband is very insecure and feeling very inadequate a poor sense of self worth would want to show who's the boss right uh, oh she seems to be doing well uh, let me show who's the boss at home she can be the boss in the office but at home i'm the boss right so being rude being bossy you know do this do that and not really uh you know uh showing the love of christ right? ephesians 5 talks about okay you know husbands love your wife as christ loved the church well none of that comes through you know it's always like being the boss because if i I need to show who's the boss because if I don't do that um uh, well then she's going to treat me bad or she's going to uh, you know it's it's not going to look good when I'm with friends and with people and uh, you know I, it's not going to look good uh, I remember when we uh when I got married and uh, a well meaning relative you know I just got married came out of the church and um uh yeah i think we finished the reception and we had it come back home and uh, uh, we were just go, about to go to my wife's place um, so yeah so finished dinner and all that so a very, very well meaning relative but he came to uh, came to us came to came to me actually personally he just uh, said hey uh, you know jay jay kumar you know uh, i know you're a very soft guy soft spoken etc so but i just want to tell you this one piece of advice you know, right from day one uh, you need to show who's the boss you know you need to be in control and uh, thank god i had actually gone through the marital preparation right so and uh, yeah so so this kind of an advice uh, day one you know i'm getting uh, of course that person probably was you know definitely was well meaning wanted us to do well in life but the thing is you know this kind of an advice you see it it can be very very damaging right uh, so i want to show who the boss is you have to be in control you have to be in charge uh, so so all these kinds of things hinder the relationship now if i was a very insecure person i'll just grab that advice and say yeah let me show you who's the boss right okay so insecurity inadequacy etc um let's uh, let's look at uh, let's just move on right um emotionally depend on pa- dependent on parents or other individuals okay so um yeah so emotionally dependent so that means that um, um you know you are uh, for for each and everything you know for your emotional well-being you are dependent you are still dependent on your uh, on your parents or it could be a friend or it could be a confidant and uh, you need to you know you're in a place where uh, you're not stable emotionally but you need to you know constantly receive from all of them you know so it means that uh, you need to constantly be in touch you need to constantly hear from them and uh, have them encourage you have them speak into your lives each and every day now that's not a uh, that's not a normal thing again right emotionally dependent 
on parents or other individuals okay next one self centeredness and unhealthy independence so that is the other extreme where everything revolves around your yourself everything every decision every choice uh, every plan you are not even considering the other person we, we, if if i'm putting myself first okay let's say um the, the couple decide okay let's let's go um to this place uh, to eat eat out okay let's go to this restaurant and uh, it's a new place that has come let's so that so if i as a husband you know i think okay you know what is my need you know what is what is the things that what are the things that i like and uh, and if i'm going to just base the decision based on that and not even consider you know what my wife likes what she is uh, you know um what is her favorite food and and if my decision to eat out is only based on that then it's very very selfish of me my right? self centeredness uh, now that's again a bad thing and unhealthy independence in the sense well everything revolves around me you know i uh, all my schedules and everything it's uh, it's totally you know totally cut away from everyone else in the family well in this case you know about uh, cut away from my wife so um i i don't depend on you for anything and also i don't want you to depend on me i you know i'm my own person you do your thing i do my thing you know there are there are you know couples where okay you go on on your vacation i'll go on my vacation right separate vacations then i you know you want to eat out okay you go with your friends i'll go with my friends i have my set of friends um well i have these activities you have that activity so there's no you know there's no common thing it's like total extreme independence you do what you want i'll do what i want and let's maintain that peace you know it's it's not a healthy thing again okay. right okay so self centeredness uh, unhealthy independence jealousy uh, pride um, being controlling demanding authoritative you know uh, again uh, um, if both are like this then it can be chaos or if one is like this then the other person gets damaged right uh, unforgiving calculative uh, you know you remember all the wrongs you know you have a record you have a wonderful memory you have remember all the wrongs uh, you remember you know what that person wore that day you remember the day you remember the time <laughs> you know everything and uh, you not only you know do you remember but you're very quick to pull that out as a weapon uh, every time you know there's a slight uh, you know argument uh, there's a difference in difference of opinion just pull that out hey, you're always like this remember the last time you did this when was the last time oh five years back but you remember you know you were saying this you did this right very calculative um, so that's uh, uh, that's another uh, that's that's something that is not healthy again um and also being selfish and stingy uh, as opposed to serving caring sharing uh, very selfish um again it's like uh, you know putting one self being very very self centered uh, being deceptive or secretive right um that's uh, sorry um being deceptive being secretive um and then um uh, being very very uh, suspicious sorry yeah. okay uh not not able to trust you okay, know these these are these could be because of past experiences right and so we bring that in to this to the marriage into the marriage um i will not trust any woman well you bring that into the marriage and to the woman to whom you've made a commitment you made a vow and and you bring that in though you've not told her but then um you brought that attitude in you brought that uh, in uh, uh you harbor that lie again saying i will not trust right so you're not willing to share anything you're not willing you're very secretive um you're not willing to be transparent um because you don't trust at the end at the back of your mind is this thought you know a woman cannot be trusted or 
you know, maybe uh, the woman could be like, you know, always be suspicious. You know, what is he up to? You know, is he seeing someone? Is he is he secretly, you know, seeing someone? Is he, you know, based on again past hurt or whatever? So just imagine if if this is how our emotions, our attitudes, um, our, our attitude is when it comes to marriage. These um, it will it will destroy the marriage. Okay, it will destroy. It's because that these issues have not been addressed. So you see, uh, in this area of emotional health, one needs to be prepared, right? And we can't just say, okay, um, we'll see how things happen. Somehow, you know, we'll just kind of go hit. You know, it'll it'll all get adjusted. You know, it's like sometimes um, I'm just reminded of this. Uh, um, you know. Uh, Again, in here in India, and um, you know, in this in my hometown, I'm actually in my hometown right now. Um, when we used to go to school, uh, we we sometimes used to take the bus, um, the the city bus, the town bus, and unbelievable number of people get into the bus. Okay, I wish I had a picture to show, but unbelievable, right? So you're just packing in, packing in, packing in, and sometimes you think, okay, how can I ever get in? Right, but then it says, "Okay, come, come, get in." And you're just standing on the, you know, the footboard, the the steps, right? And you're just hanging, and everybody seems to, you know, if they pull, if one more person pulls, it, it's as if the bus will topple. You know, you're just pulling it, and then and then somehow you you just go and you make your way in, and then people are just you know adjusting, and then you just go in, and then. Uh, and the thing is, the the conductor is making his way. You know, he's making making his way. You know, from there somehow he's moving and then coming and then uh, and then you need to buy your ticket and I don't know how that happens. You know, we did that for so many years. So sometimes we think, okay, all this is there. It's like it's like a crowded bus, but somehow it will it'll be fine. You know, just like you're jostling and this thing. Somehow, you know, in all that, it'll just fall in place. You know that's a wrong assumption. You know it might work for a bus here in India, a town bus, going from point A to point B. But you know it's a very dangerous thing, right? So one needs to prepare. One needs to be intentional about dealing with um, uh, emotional health. Okay. So any questions here? Um, anything at all that you want to address? That you want to ask? Uh, um, so you can do that right now. Before we move on to the next one, um, any questions at all? Okay, uh, one big question is okay, how do I do this? Now I know that, you know, I identify this um, in myself, so how do I, you know, deal with this, right? So, um, so there are resources. Now there is a a separate course that we're doing, right? So that there are resources, um, there are books, and I just mentioned that um, resources that we have. So one one big thing, uh, one one major, I would say, truth that one needs to be strong in is uh, who you are in Christ, who we are in Christ. You know, that's going to sort out a lot of things. You know, our identity, our security, our self-worth, irrespective of whether we are educated or not educated, whether we are rich or poor, whether we are, you know, uh, talented, not talented, you know, who we are in Christ. Now that's going to settle, that truth is going to settle a lot of things that we are accepted, we are, you know, uh, invited, we are loved by God, we are precious to him. So that's going to sort out a lot of things and bring in a lot of strength and reassurance where we don't have to you know put on an act right we don't have to be um, uh, you know uh, you know uh, act in a very negative way or do things in order to grab attention in order to you know show who's uh, who's the boss or who's superior you don't have to do all that right so that is one of the truth and uh, the other thing is to receive recognize Okay, recognize first of all and receive healing. Okay, um, receive healing. The third thing is to renounce it. Well, renounce 
what does renounce mean? Repent and renounce. Uh, you know, for repentance is, of course, you you make a change, you decide to change, and renounce is you decide, you just push it away. You're saying, I'm not going to take that back, right? There might be suggestions. There might be, uh, well, temptations to take back those attitudes, to take back those, um, to, to, you know, display those emotions, but you're renouncing it, okay? And it's a choice that you make. Okay. And of course, we know that we need our minds need to be too, you know, to even renounce it. Our mind needs to be uh, renewed to the truth of God's word. And then, when our mind is renewed, our emotions are ch changed, uh, our our thought processes change. Uh, therefore, our behavior changes, our speech changes, our behavior changes. So, our mind needs to be renewed through the truth of God's word. Right, so, um, so we, uh, uh, you know, when you look at um, uh, the subject of healing and deliverance, and also uh, receiving emotional healing, you know, deals with that in depth. Okay, so, so these are some things that we need to do. Okay, so uh, what we also recommend when it comes to, you know, emotional health is that if somebody is going through a season of grieving, maybe somebody's lost a loved one, maybe it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a parent or maybe it's a, a sibling or someone in the family. And then, uh, what we very strongly recommend is that the person does not rush into uh, a marriage, like rush into a relationship or rush into a marriage, right? Because uh, then the, the tendency is to like depend heavily on that other person uh, for their emotional well-being uh, and be a weight there, and and which the other person cannot, right? Uh, cannot provide. Um, so, so the thing, best thing is to wait, receive healing, receive strength, and then um, get into any kind of a, uh, like a relationship or marriage, right? Okay, so the, then uh, let's look at the next one, which is uh, management of yourself. Okay, managing oneself. Okay, uh, I hope you're all following. Everybody there? Okay. Uh, so personal management, okay, management of ourself. Um, so what does that mean? Proverbs 25, 28. Um, Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Okay, so whoever does not know how to guide one's own affairs and things, you know, uh, duties, responsibilities, who does not know how to rule over his own spirit, her own spirit, is like a city broken down, which means very vulnerable without protection, open for attack, um, very, very, um, you know, uh, you know it's, it's a great weakness, right? So one needs to know, one needs to have the skill to, to conduct oneself, to be organized, to be able to uh, rule over or conduct our own, you know, various things that we need to look at. So we're going to look at a few things, right? So, um, First thing is uh, when it comes to career, okay. your work. Um, well, it, it, are you able to provide for uh, provide for your needs <clears throat> and for the needs of the household? Very important point, right? Um, so you're trying to get married, great, uh, but are you able to provide? No, do you have a steady job, or maybe you're uh, you're, a, you're a, maybe you're thinking about a business or an entrepreneur. You know, is is there enough coming in so that the household can can be supported? And uh, you know, do you have enough for you and your spouse and children when they come? You know, th these are things. So your career, your work, your profession. Um, you know, are, are you going? Are you holding on? I mean, are, are you, not, holding on is not the word. You know, are you? Do you have a steady job? Right. Is it steady? Are you? Is it something that you're? You know, uh, I remember you know talking to someone who actually um, changed a job every year or even shorter than that. You know, sometimes two jobs in a year, and uh, and these were these were well-paying jobs. It's not like you know, it's not like the uh, the jobs were not paid paying well or there was not enough salary or it was not like that. It was these were good positions, but uh, but. Sadly, the person 
um, you know, just just resign because at the slightest provocation, right? Uh, or maybe the pride was hurt, or maybe they, uh, you know, it just went on. It was a it was a very bad season in the sense, uh, you know, just to look back and uh, talk to the person. You know, so many uh, job changes, uh, so it just it didn't look good on the resume. It doesn't talk highly about the person, and so when when you know when you go for an interview, it's like uh, uh, the person thinks twice, thrice before hiring because it's like so many changes. So will the person stick on? Or not being able to uh, stay, uh, no steadfastness, right? So yeah, so career uh, important. Um, so uh, other things also would be like, um, okay, if the person is working from home, uh, you know, clearly de demarcated, okay, these are work hours, these are family hours, you know, well, there could be seasons where things overlap, maybe there's something to be submitted, maybe there's a project which is, uh, you know, there's a product release or something if you're in IT and uh, maybe there's a big presentation happening, coming up, a big, big client meeting maybe. So therefore, you know, um, extra hours at work and uh, that eats into family time, but that's, but it should not be an everyday thing, right? So clearly demarcated boundaries and so on. Okay, so uh, one very other important uh, uh, thing to talk about is, um, Okay, maybe we'll take a break and we'll come back. Okay, I'm just going to talk about, you know, what if uh, the job requires a person or maybe husband or the wife to relocate to another place, right? Separated. Uh, and they need to work separately, uh, maybe in one other country and this thing. It's a common occurrence, right? So we'll talk about that when we come back. Okay, so we'll take a break. Thank you.